there he is. All right. There he is. Dash, my boy, huh? Hey, look. Look, your people are out there. Your people are. And as usual, he doesn't care, but I still do. Hi, everybody. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center in far west Texas. And we're battling the west Texas wind because it is the last day of January 2019. Wanted to do a video about our um, solar hot water system. Now, if you've come by here from uh, Keywords or uh, you've know, been referred here and you're not familiar with the Eco Ranch and myself, a lot of talking. So if you like things in one or two minutes and 140 characters or less, wrong place. But if you want to learn something, you're in the right place. So hang in there. I guarantee you're going to learn something and you'll get the chance to see not a how-to video, but a how I did it video. And hopefully when you see my how I did it videos, it will help you to determine how you're going to do it. So when it comes to domestic hot water in an off-grid situation like this, there's several ways you can approach it. If you're a minimalist, in other words, somebody who has a um, one of those homemade trailers um, that everybody seems to be doing now, they got TV shows on, so those little homemade trailers um, that you can drag around from one spot to another. Um, you usually will have a tank up on the roof and everything's going to gravity feed. The majority of the solar hot water videos that I have seen have been people that are using um, gravity fed hot water systems. And it's, if, if you're doing that, if you've, got, if you've got a small place, you're living with, a, you know, your, your solar electricity is a light bulb and a laptop and maybe a freezer, um, fine. That's one way to do it. And if that's the way you're looking to do your solar hot water, there's like at least 100 videos out there that'll show you how to do a gravity-fed system where you throw a black hose up on the roof and call it a day. I have a different problem here. This is a three-bedroom, three-and-a-half bathroom compound with a, a, a nearly 2,000 square foot greenhouse and I have a processing room for processing uh, the animals that we grow here for our own consumption. So we need pressurized water and we need pressurized hot water. So I wanted to figure out a way to, do, to have my hot water heated by the sun and still be under pressure which is city pressure at 45 pounds per square inch. That's what we run throughout the whole compound. So I'm gonna show you the solution that we came up with that is working. I've been waiting three days to do this video because we had three days of hideous clouds and you couldn't tell if the system worked or not. It worked and I wanna share it with you right here. So, you and I are up on the roof now. This is the roof of the compound. It's roughly 8,000 square feet. It's 8,000 square feet for one really good reason. Actually, two. One, we wanted this much room. And two, you need a lot of surface area if you're going to capture rainwater. That's where our, I would say, 80% of our water comes from rainwater that we capture here on this roof. Now, when you got an 8,000 square foot roof, you also have an awful lot of surface area where you could gather heat from the sun. There's a couple ways you can do it. You could use black ABS pipe, one inch black ABS pipe or even inch and a quarter. You could go to half inch and split it into a dozen different ways so it moves real slow and then gather it back up. I happen to have some um, poly pipe, poly irrigation pipe that was given to me. You know, here we practice something we call the green dozen mantras to sustainable living. I'm going to put a link to those. I have them printed out. But the first two are we practice the three R's of sustainability. Reuse, repurpose, recycle. And if you do that, you are respecting the earth. We don't put that fourth one in there. Reuse, repurpose, recycle. So if I get an opportunity to get something from somebody for free or that's going to end up in a landfill, I take it. So we took the poly pipe. If I were doing this from scratch, I would have gone and had the byproduct anyway, I would have bought black ABS. But this is, I had this and it's here. And that brings up our second mantra, which is we kiss and kick everything. Now, 
Y'all can say with me what kiss means. Keep it simple, stupid. But what about kicking? How do you kick something? You just keep it cheap, kiddo. So in trying to stick with our mantras, we got the poly pipe, the poly irrigation pipe, which was given to me, so we're repurposing it, and we're keeping it cheap. And I'm gonna get behind the camera and show you just what we did with the poly pipe. It's a no-brainer, it's really simple. I did six lines of one inch poly pipe. Let me show you. Now we'll go down in the uh, mechanical room in a minute, but I just wanted to show you. Here's where the line comes up from the mechanical room. It is running into this pipe that goes all the way up. Now notice it's at the highest point of the roof. I'm doing that for a very important reason. So that pipe goes, it's on the highest point of the roof, and it now is dropping slightly as it goes to the end there. Now that's 72 feet. Now I might put a couple more runs in so there's a big gap to the next line. Again, the next line does the same thing. It's coming downhill, roughly 70 feet, to here, to this junction. Going back, another junction, coming back, all the time going downhill. Very similar to Donkey Kong, if you were playing Donkey Kong. That's kind of how this system is set up. Goes down there 72 feet comes back here and drops back down into the um, mechanical room. Now, why do I have the pipe set up like Donkey Kong going from high to low? Well, you can almost imagine that gravity is going to feed, right? Gravity would just drop it down. Well, that'd be great if it were a gravity system, but I already told you it's not a gravity system. But, but, we get freezing weather here. And it's January, we've just had some freezing weather. We can get some freezing weather, and the last thing you want to do is leave water under 45 pounds of pressure up here on the roof to freeze, because what's going to happen? Point, Kaboom! What's going to happen to all my harvested rainwater? If I don't get to it in time, it's going to end up all over the desert, and we're going to be hauling water in here at 10 cents a gallon. So we don't want that. So I had to devise a system whereby I could turn these off and drain them all the way down so there'd be no water up here on those cold cold nights that's the reason for the donkey kong setup let's go in the mechanical room and i'll show you how we hooked it up in the mechanical room again this is a how i did it designed to give you ideas so that you can go out and do your system everything i have done here in in, um, in this entire compound with the exception of two things have been things that I've gotten ideas from from other people on YouTube, other new homesteaders, other people living off the grid, people that just want to help out by showing something. Now, one of those two systems is this system that we're talking about because I found no videos talking about pressurized water in an off-grid situation. That's why I think this video is important uh, and it can be very helpful to you. You may want to tweak it to your own how you live, um, you can also tweak it further. Let's say you live up in Minneapolis, which right now, 31st of January, it's what, 35 below zero? You need that water to get out of there pretty quick. So you'll need to do some tweaking there with one-way valves. And again, I won't get into that here. We're just going to get into how this system is working. And by the way, we're going to talk about the temperature. The temperature outdoors here right now is about 65 degrees. It is partly cloudy, mostly sunny. Let's call it mostly sunny. Let's go down in the mechanical room. So while we were up on the roof, I neglected to tell you how I fastened the poly pipe to the metal roof. Uh, if you've ever worked with those metal roofs, depending on whether you've got a standing seam or not, my, mine is just the more, quote, traditional pattern of, of a, a tall ridge and a couple of small ones and a tall ridge. They're about 39 inches wide, I believe, and when you interlock them together, they form 36 inch panels. So if you've got 12 feet to go with, you put uh, four of them down and you've covered the 12 feet. Well, where the two panels interlock like so, you should stitch that together. They, send, they sell special screws for stitching that together. What I've done is every three feet up there where I have the two panels overlapping, the uh, poly pipe goes this way and I've taken a strap, a copper strap, put it over the poly pipe and gone through both of the roof panels to further stitch them together and hold them a little bit tighter. Also, by going through the roof with what's essentially unnecessary screws, I mean, they don't, I don't need them to hold the roof on, 
but by putting them up on the ridge I've lessened the chance of any kind of a leak coming through uh, at that point so I just wanted to tell you that you can adjust yours to however you want to do it but this is again how I did it let's go in the mechanical room and I'll try to show you a little bit of this Rube Goldberg setup I set up <laughs> now in here I'm still working on moving a few things around. Most, um, uh, the thing that needs the most work is I have to move our pump around a little bit. The hot water tanks are staying where they are, and these are two electric gas, electric gas, yeah, right, electric hot water heaters where I've taken the elements out. I've taken the elements out and put in a 12 volt, 600 watt element. Now I use those to dump my excess power until I came up with a different system. So for right now, these are they're, they're there because if I take them out, there'll be a, a, the water would come all out. Uh, but these will hold the water under pressure. So it's just two 50 gallon tanks to hold the water under pressure and um, insulate it. So I showed you the line coming into the mechanical room. This line drops down here to the um, to the first hot water heater. Now. There's a junction right here. There's a T here. This T goes over to my manifolds, which, by the way, this is all PEX, as you can see. I made these manifolds myself for about $100. If I had bought them pre-made, it would have cost $360. Kiss and kick everything you can. So um, that line goes down into the cold water. It's labeled hot water system, and it comes in, and it will refill this as we take water out. Now, it's real simple. One tank, we come out of what would be the output into the input of the second tank here, and then out of the output here, and we go to this junction, which feeds my hot water system. That's my hot water manifold up there. And also, it comes down here. I switched colors from uh, red to blue because now essentially this is the cooler water not cold water but the cooler water coming up to the pump this is a badger circulating pump it's designed to circulate water under pressure well, that's what it's supposed to do and we run right up here and out to where I had showed you before now coming back to the input coming out of these uh, pipes I still have to adjust the speed of the pump to make sure that I get the hottest water coming through. Obviously if the water comes through the uh, pipes too fast it's not going to get heated up and too slow it's going to, um, well it's just not going to have enough heat when it, it, when it gets down here. So right now um, I'm not feeling very much heat right here. Now, earlier it was coming in at about 100 degrees probably telling me that the uh, pump is on too high. It's got three speeds, so we're going to drop it one. Then over here is my temperature gauge. Now this has only been on for an hour, this whole system. And so we're, we're not, um, uh, we haven't had a chance to get much heat. But I will show you. Now remember, the hot water is coming in this tank. It's got to go through the 50 gallons here, into this tank, through the 50 gallons here, to come out here to uh, to read in my temperature in my thermometer it's coming out at 56 degrees it was 46 when I turned it on so we've jumped 10 degrees just by circulating again it's going to take a while for me to heat 100 gallons of water once I get the 100 gallons of water hot it won't cool down that much overnight and it won't take so long but right now we've got cold water out here that's what we've been fighting and that's why we did this we didn't want to install a propane system because it's a fossil fuel and we didn't want to use electric because that does take a bit too much power. Now I said that uh, we had to have a way of um, getting the water out of the system on those cold nights. You could um, you could start rigging it with thermal couplers and, te and temperature uh, sensors. Uh, I try to stay away from that because it's making it just a little bit more complicated. So the way I would get the water out of this system on those nights that are going to get cold is I would come over here to my hot water valve on the manifold, turn off the hot water coming into the, um, uh, into the tanks. Just throw that valve, turn it off. Then I would come over here to the overflow here and pull this up. And you can hear the water there. 
that's draining into my um, that's draining into my gray water system so the water that's up there which we figure is about 12 gallons of water ends up going into my gray water system so we haven't lost it but what will happen because of that Donkey Kong system up there all that water will just drain right out and right down into here so we haven't lost the water but more importantly we're not risking freezing one of those elbows so that's the system the way I designed it to work here a uh, little frustrating because we're still under these partly cloudy skies usually we have about 330 days a year of brilliant sunshine here of course I've got clouds above us right now so we're not getting the effect we want had the water already been warm had the system been working we'd still have warm water but we're just trying to get it kicked off and working now it was very encouraging earlier when there wasn't any clouds in the sky and I had water that to my hands uh, felt like it was about 100 degrees coming off that roof on a 65 degree day with a light wind blowing here in the end of January not too bad we could deal with 100 degree water if we if, if we got that so um, that's it I hope you enjoyed the video if you did take a look at some of the other videos if you want to subscribe subscribe this channel is not monetized I don't have any advertising and I don't make any money whether if you watch or if you don't watch I do this just to educate you so that you can come and live a more sustainable life using less resources get yourself out of life debt and be a little bit happier with life you know America is angry we've been angry for a number of years it's not just the last two although we've been madder the last two we've been angry for a while we're angry because we're working our butts off to pay off a life debt and meet these arbitrary deadlines hopefully by doing things like this and adjusting your life somewhat getting your debt down we can all be a little bit happier so on behalf of myself and my partner at the beginning who I forgot to introduce Cascade the Wonder Dog everybody wonders what it is he does around here including me but he's Cascade the Wonder Dog on behalf of all of us I'll thank you for watching the video it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center in Far West Texas we'll see you later